So I think that one of the reasons why this debate was so insufferable and difficult to watch was because Donald Trump would not stop talking. He repeatedly interrupted Joe Biden again and again. And, you know, I get that being overly combative and aggressive is a debate tactic that can sometimes work. However, there's a line. And if you get overly loud and obnoxious during the debate, you no longer come off as someone who's dominating the debate and trying to, you know, set the narrative. You just come off as someone who is obnoxious and people hate you. Hence why 69% of viewers thought that the debate was annoying. Now, having said that, there were moments in the debate, they were seldom, but they were there nonetheless, where Donald Trump was actually really quiet. And there were moments when he didn't know how to respond to an attack that Joe Biden was lobbying against him that was actually surprisingly really brutal. So when it comes to COVID-19, Donald Trump has an abysmal record on COVID-19. He doesn't know how to defend himself. I mean, in response to the fact that 200,000 Americans have died because of his mishandling of COVID-19, what does he say? Oh, well, if you were president, 2 million would have died. What? You just made that up. He also brought up Joe Biden's handling of swine flu. You chose to bring up 14,000 people dying compared to 200,000 people dying? You're just a moron. However, when Joe Biden was going through all of Donald Trump's failures and specifically why the so-called economic recovery that we're already starting to see isn't actually something that's benefiting everyone, Trump was silent. He didn't know how to respond. And Joe Biden managed to get in an attack that I think is definitely going to land. Take a look. As I, as I said, posing the question, the president says it's a V-shaped recovery. You say it's a K-shaped recovery. What's the difference? The difference is millionaires and billionaires like him in the middle of the COVID crisis have done very well. Another billionaires have, raised, have made another $300 billion because of his profligate tax uh, uh, proposal. And he only focused on the market. But you folks at home, you folks living in Scranton and Claymont and all the small towns and working class towns in America. How old are you doing? This guy paid well, a total of $750 in taxes. Sir, and sir, wait, wait, no, sir, it's just the wrong state. Yeah, I understand. You've agreed to the two minutes, so please let him have it. Do I get my time back? The fact is that he has, in fact, worked on this in a way that he's going to be the first president of the United States to leave office, having fewer jobs in his administration than when he became president. Fewer jobs than when he became president. First one in American history. Secondly, the people who have lost their jobs are those people who have been on the front lines, those people who have been saving our lives, those people who have been out there dying, people who have been putting themselves in the way to make sure that we could all try to make it. And the idea that he is insisting that we go forward and open when you have almost half the states in America with a significant increase in COVID deaths and COVID cases in the United States of America. And he wants to open it up more. Why does he want to open it up? Why doesn't he take care of the America? You can't fix the economy until you fix the COVID crisis. And he has no intention of doing anything about making it better for you all at home in terms of your health and your safety. Schools, why aren't schools open? Because it costs a lot of money to open them safely. You know, they, they were gonna give, his administration was gonna give the teachers and school students masks. And then they decided, no, couldn't do that because it's not a national emergency. Not a national emergency. They've done nothing to help small businesses. Nothing, they're closing. One in six is now gone. He ought to get on the job and take care of the needs of the American people so we can open safely. All right, your time is up, sir. Well, we are gonna get to the- I we're have gonna, to respond to that. Well, you both had two minutes, sir. Excuse me, he made a statement. I, so did you. People want their schools, no, people want their schools open. They don't want to be shut down. They don't want their state shut down. They want their restaurants. I look at New York, it's so sad what's happening in New York. It's almost like a ghost town. And I'm not sure it can ever recover what they've done in New York. People want their places open. They want to get back to their lives. People They'll want be to careful, be safe. but they want their schools open. Okay. I'm the one safe. that brought back football. By the way, I brought back Big Ten <laughs> football. Again, that was one of the few times when Donald Trump was actually quiet and did not interrupt Joe Biden. Because if you interrupt him, what are you going to say? You can't respond to this. You didn't anticipate that Joe Biden would actually take this approach where he's kind of outpopulisting you. 
if I can make up the word, because I don't think populisting is a word, but you get what I'm saying. I mean, I don't think Joe Biden is a populist, but you've got to play that role if you want to outmaneuver Donald Trump. And he did that. So when Donald Trump was bragging about the economy, Trump brought up millionaires and billionaires like him are doing really well. And that's actually accurate. That's actually accurate. And Trump didn't know what to say about that. When Biden looked at the camera and said, you know, how are you doing? That was brutal because people are struggling right now. We're seeing an eviction crisis and Trump is basically just kicking the can down the road, extending that moratorium on evictions, but people still are going to owe months in back rent come January 1st. So Trump had no idea what to say. Also, Biden surprisingly brought up the point, you can't fix the economy until you fix the COVID crisis. And this is key because Trump wants to pretend as if COVID-19 is no longer a thing and just reopen the economy and send children back to school. But the thing is that you can't pick and choose between a thriving economy and, you know, um, containing COVID-19. Like, these are inextricably linked. You have to attack COVID-19 and try to aggressively eliminate it. Otherwise, you're never going to get the economy back in a healthy state. And it was never in a healthy state to begin with. But still, if you want to see any sort of recovery whatsoever, you can't just brush aside the fact that millions of people right now are losing their jobs. Hundreds of thousands have died and are getting sick because of this virus. You can't just brush that aside. So what Joe Biden said here was absolutely brutal. And if there's any moment that could have persuaded someone who was undecided to flip from, you know, a Trump to Biden, I think that could have been the moment right there, assuming that COVID-19 is their number one issue. And I think that Americans do think this is the most important issue. Now, another moment of the debate where Trump was admittedly less quiet here, Joe Biden did manage to get in a lot of blows that I think did hurt Donald Trump. Like, these are going to do some damage here. 200,000 dead. As you said, over 7 million infected in the United States. We, in fact, have 5%, 4% of the world's population. 20% of the deaths, 40,000 people a day are contracting COVID. In addition to that, about between 750 and 1,000 people a day are dying. When he was presented with that number, he said, it is what it is. Well, it is what it is because you are who you are. That's why it is. The president has no plan. He hasn't laid out anything. He knew all the way back in February how serious this crisis was. He knew it was a deadly disease. What did he do? He's on tape is acknowledging he knew it. He said he didn't tell us or give people a warning of it because he didn't want to panic the American people. You don't panic. He panicked. In addition to that, what did he do? He went in and he, we were insisting that the Chinese, the, the people we had on the ground in China should be able to go to Wuhan and determine for themselves how dangerous this was. He did not even ask Xi to do that. He told us what a great job she was doing. He said we owe him a debt of gratitude for being so transparent with us. And what did he do then? He then did nothing. He, he waited and waited and waited. He still doesn't have a plan. Wrong. I laid yeah, out sir, back in March so, exactly so what wrong. we should be doing. And I laid out again in July what we should be doing. We should be providing all the protective gear possible. We should be providing the money the House has passed in order to be able to go out and get people the help they need to keep their businesses open, open schools that cost a lot of money. You should get out of your bunker and get out of the sand trap and get in, in your golf course and go in the Oval Office and bring together the Democrats and Republicans and fund what needs to be done now to save lives. So he brought up Donald Trump saying it is what it is in response to the deaths due to COVID-19. He brought up how, you know, uh, in a conversation with Bob Woodward back in February, he knew about the severity of COVID-19, but didn't act knowing how severe it was. It's because of him that we are in this situation. And Joe Biden did a phenomenal job, surprisingly, at laying that out. Like, I'm by no means saying that Joe Biden did a good job overall in this debate because I think his performance was lackluster and if you're going to say he was the winner of this debate overall which I do contend that he basically won by default but if there were any moments of the debate where I think that Joe Biden actually did a good job it was these uh these two moments right here where Joe Biden actually hit Donald Trump on his record see in 2016 when you are you know the candidate running on no political record 
It's easy to attack your opponent, but now when you're the incumbent, you've got to defend that record. And this debate demonstrated to people that Donald Trump doesn't know how to defend his record. He just lies and says, oh, well, you would have been worse, except that's not persuasive to voters. And so, you know, the fact that he didn't anticipate these sorts of uh, criticisms from Joe Biden, it shows that he wasn't really prepared and he was assuming that, you know, just being belligerent and loud would help him win this debate when that's not the case. You know, you, you, you know, you know, the, you know, the thing, thing. you're getting nervous, man, man.